even if it's six out of seven days of rubbish, you hold out for that. And what an amazing day of landscape. It must have been nice to, not really having to rush that and really enjoying it and taking it taking it in your stride really without really trying to because I think you said what, what were you getting like five six hours of, of, of sunlight per day? Yeah, it's between if you were eking out and you were you were starting in the dark, you could probably get between seven and eight hours a day of skiing in. But yeah. this was a holiday, yeah. so we were between five and six hours. So our pace actually wasn't bad. If you're doing fifteen k in five hours or so. You double the distance, double the time, you'd be doing a 30k day, which is respectable. You know, people are really obsessed with speed and the total number of, of kilometers, but everything's been done. Finnmark is just a small fry. People were doing this okay. 150 years ago, so I'm there just to um, be in the landscape. And photography is a big passion of mine, so it's mainly to be there actually to try and, and take photos when and where I can. Uh, yeah, there, there are some lovely photos you've posted on Instagram. The question again about wildlife, did you see much... Or much wildlife on Finnmark? No, we saw a flock of ptarmigan and that was it really. Not too far over the border two years ago, I visited an area which is much more challenging. So Sarek National Park is okay. sometimes dubbed as Europe's last wilderness and slightly lower latitude, but that's much more serious terrain. There's two and three thousand metre mountains and glaciers there. So we did a 10 day route through and around, unfortunately we got turned back in Sarek, but Stora Shofley National Park. Anyway, I digress, but there they have interesting wildlife like wolverine. They have bear, but obviously the bears are hibernating in the winter. They have moose as well. There are moose around in the north of Norway, but certainly not on the mountain plateaus. Reindeer, they have reindeer in Finnmark. If you've ever seen yeah. a slow TV program at Christmas where there's a lady marching a reindeer across the plateau, that's in Finnmark speed, but um, yeah, yeah, not quite at the right time of year for that. I actually had a reindeer kebab when I was in when I was in Finland. I don't know how I feel about it, and I just it just popped into my head there. It, it tastes nice. Yeah, no, it, it, it did. It was delicious. I just I, don't, I just don't know how I feel about eating a reindeer. You've done quite a bit in Norway, haven't you? Is Norway a bit of a does that have a pull for you? Yeah, I've been to so four trips in Norway: two in Hardangervida, two in Finnmarksvida, and it's accessible. That's primarily yeah. it. You can get to Oslo within two hours. From Oslo, you can get on the train to Hardangavida within four hours. And that was a historic post training ground for people like Shackleton and Amundsen. Yeah. So, yeah, I think accessibility yep. um, and the fact that there are guides there, you can rent kits. Um, there's a lot of information online as well. The maps are easy to get hold of. People have done routes and posted nice, excuse me, blogs and photos about them. So, the information is accessible. So, I think some of my next trips would be to the lesser known parts of either Sweden or Finland, as well as I've still got dreams of lots of other bigger, grander adventures, but mm-hmm. they're harder to fit in in terms of time. 